Well, good afternoon. How's everyone doing this evening? Y'all's too quiet for me. Do what? <laughs> oh, God's awesome, ain't he? We serve a wonderful God tonight. I thank him tonight for saving me. Um, if you do not know me, and I think pretty much all of you do, uh, my name's Billy Kirk, and I'm actually, I was ordained out of this church to go uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and me and my wife served a, a small church in Asheville for eight years, and God led us back down here. We actually didn't want to leave the mountains, but God says it's time. Uh, I was ready to get out of the cold anyway. Uh, my, I'm getting too old for the cold. Do what? Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it, it was an awesome, it, it was an awesome time in the Lord. I grown in the Lord. Uh, that's the main thing, isn't it? Um, it, it? It's just awesome to serve God tonight. Uh, I don't know how Greg usually starts out, but uh, we can start out in prayer. Uh, does anybody got any special requests? Uh, remember the people with COVID. Everybody's too quiet. I remember my wife's grandmother, she lost down to uh, 58 pounds. Um, and they told the family if if they want to go see her, they better go. So, uh, And remember her mama, she started uh, radiation on her brain uh, Monday. So just remember Diane. Dale and Teresa Wilson. Remember his whole family. Unspoken. Let's pray. Father God, we do come to you to thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings in our life, Father. We thank you for saving our souls, Lord. Father, now as I pray, Lord, I pray that uh, you would be glorified through this service. Every word that's spoken, Lord, you would be high and lifted up, Father. I pray for all the spoken and unspoken requests, Father. And Father, I ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I guess I can start preaching, can I? If you would, turn to Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Let's just read 15 too. Verse 15, 16, and 17, Romans chapter 1. Everybody got? So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Let's pray. Father God, we do uh, thank you again, Lord, for the great opportunity to be in your house tonight, Father. And I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, speak to us through your word, through your Holy Spirit, Lord. Use me as your mouthpiece. In Christ's name, amen. So what we're going to look at tonight is the marks of the gospel message. The mark of the gospel message. First, you know, we get, as soon as we wake up in the morning, all the way till night, we get a bunch of messages, don't we? And the TV, uh, we turn on the TV, we see messages, they try to tell us what to eat, they try to tell us what car to buy, they try to tell us uh, what insurance to buy, too. You know that little lizard, gecko? Uh, even uh, the government sends out messages to get us to accept their plans and goals for America. Uh, just the following week, one sent out and said, if you do whatever they say, uh, you can have a little party for the 4th of July. Let's just not go there. And then even uh, your, your phone sends you messages. The other day I was driving, and as I drive, I actually drive a garbage truck, and they tell us not to answer our phones when it rains. So I don't answer the phone when it rains. So I just set it to the side and let it ring, and whenever I stopped, uh, I got a voicemail. And I listened to the voicemail, and guess who it was? Some woman got on there and says, I see, I see where your warranty on your car is dead. Does anybody ever get them messages? Every day. And then, one of the greatest messages that can be sent out that we hold in our hands is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. See, we got, we got that message that we can take out to the world that Jesus Christ came, He died on the cross, and on the third day He rose from the dead. That is our hope today, isn't it? Amen. Amen. The first uh, mark is the gospel is marked by sovereign power. The gospel is marked by power. Uh, the power of God. You notice what Paul says here. It, it, it's the power of God, isn't it? It's not the power of man. It's the power of God. And a lot of times we try to take that power, don't we? Come on now, let's just be honest. Most of all, let's just be honest with God. Come on. Now listen very carefully. God could have revealed His power against sin in any way that He chose, couldn't He? He could have wiped men from the face of the earth. He could have done anything that He wanted because He is the all-powerful God. He can do anything. It is a blessing to notice that when the Lord moved to do something about sin, He exercised His power in sending men the gospel of grace. Nowhere is the, is the power of God as visible as it is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think about it. When God takes a lost sinner and saves him by His grace and makes him a new creature, that is a powerful thing, isn't it? God could have sent us all to hell, but He instead chose to send us His love wrapped up in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that Paul's message is the gospel of Christ. Make no mistake about it, there are many different gospels spoken out in this world today. There is the gospel of religion that says, turn over a new leaf. Let me tell you something, I, I don't have a religion. I've got a relationship Amen. with Jesus Christ. There is the gospel of materialism that says your worth is determined uh, by what you have gained in, in this lifetime. 
There is the gospel of society that says, do as you please, for life is short. Have you ever heard that one? I hear it every day. But Paul's message, on the other hand, says, you are a sinner, and if you die in your sins, you will go to hell. However, God loves you and sent his Son, the Lord Jesus, into the world. Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. If you will place your faith in him, then you can and will be eternally saved. The gospel of Christ is a, a, is a simple message, isn't it? It is clearly stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 uh, through 4, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died uh, for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. Romans 4, 25 states it in even fewer words, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Paul knew firsthand about the power of, the, of this gospel. 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 15. Now listen very carefully. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me uh, for that he uh, counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer. Now, this is Paul speaking. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and, and injur injurious, uh, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundantly with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. See, the greatest message that the church has got is the love of Christ. See, it doesn't matter what we've done in our life. If we have enough faith in Jesus Christ and we ask Jesus to come into our lives and save us, he will. Because if you study the life of Paul, just study his life. He killed Christians for a living. That's what he done. God still saved him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't... Li listen, people. Let me tell you. As a church of the living God, we've got to get this message out. We've got to get that message out. This dying world... I've heard... You know, I went to two schools. I went to Fruitland, and then I went to uh, Liberty... But I did Liberty online. But Fruitland, you heard more debates on stupid stuff. And I'm going to call it stupid because it was. Than anything. And I finally told them young boys, I said, listen. Let's quit debating on this stuff and let's worry about this dying world because they're dying and going to hell. We need to get this gospel out. We need to show God the love. We need to show people the love of God, don't we? The problem is we don't do it a lot of times. Let's just get honest. If we see someone that don't wear the same type of clothes we wear, we back off, don't we? Let's just go this far. If we see someone uh, in drugs and alcohol, we back off, don't we? Do you know they need God's love too? Now let me tell you, where me and Angie served up in Asheville, uh, we knew a couple of cops there. And they said that area was the worst in Buncombe County. The worst. I went out in that community. I'm, I'm going to mention this because this, this, is, this is God working. I went out in that community, and I'm telling you one thing right now. I couldn't speak their language. It was, they say it was the most diverse neighborhood in Buncombe County. So we realized, says, now how are we going to get the gospel to these people? When I can't speak Russian or I can't speak Spanish, how am I going to get the gospel to these people? So God opened the door. 
We actually opened the door for a, for a new plant uh, for a Romanian church. They're booming now. They got 60 or 70 people coming. And then God opened the door for a Spanish uh, plant. Before I left there, now they backed off a little bit because of the COVID. But before I left last year, they baptized, what was it, about five people? That's very good for a Spanish plant. See, the way that we ought to think, we should have the eyes of Jesus Christ, shouldn't we? Come on now, church. Jesus didn't care uh, what they did, did he? He loved them, didn't he? And we should have that eye. Uh, the same focus. Listen, we should have the same focus as Jesus Christ had. Let me, add, let me give you a story, and this is true in the Bible. Yeah, everything in the Bible is true, ain't it? How about the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4? You know Jesus wasn't even supposed to be there? Do you know the Jews, get, get your history book, the Jews always went all the way around and never did go into that country. What did Jesus do? He went straight in there, didn't he? Because he knew that woman needed salvation. That's what we need to do. Sometimes we just need to get places that we don't, that we don't want to go, but we need to go and get the gospel out, don't we? Come on now, church. We need that gospel out in this community, don't we? That's even a commandment from God. Go and preach the gospel. Secondly, we see the gospel is marked by a, a purpose. What is that purpose? Why did God uh, go to such lengths for a fallen sinner? Why? Why did he give up his son to die on the cross for the sins of his people? The primary answer is simply that he loved us. When Jesus hung on the cross, he looked down uh, at the people that was there. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Not other and did he look down at them people, but he saw us today. That's forgiveness, ain't it? And let me tell you something. The greatest words that ever come out of Christ's mouth, when he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. What is he saying? The plan of salvation is finished. I did it. That's what he's saying, ain't it? Woo! Glory! Wake up, church! Or whoever's online, get up off of your couch and start jumping. I don't care. I told him last time, I told him, I, now I preached for eight years in the mountains, so you got to get, you got to be, just look over me. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, listen, church, we're going to heaven one day, ain't we? Yeah. We're, we're going to heaven. I want everybody else to go with me. I want everybody else to have the same thing I've got. I've got Jesus Christ. And I want people to have that. So the primary thing is love. Right here. Jesus said in John, greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. He loved us that much. And he just didn't die for the whites. He died for the blacks. He died for the, uh, the Mexicans. He died for, uh, for everyone, didn't he? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'm going to get fired up up here just in a minute. Whoo, glory. The world, listen, but there's a different one. Why did Jesus come? For salvation. What does salvation mean? What does it mean? It means safety or, or deliverance. It carries the idea of being rescued from all harm and danger. What does that mean? 
God's desire in saving sinners is to forever deliver them from what? Spiritual death. Spiritual defilement. Spiritual deception. And spiritual destruction. And I'm going to say this. It ought to make every Baptist jump up and down. Lest we forget the end of all sinners outside the Lord Jesus is the fires of hell. You know what? Let me tell you something. Hell ain't being preached like it should. If heaven's real, hell's real. And that's going to be an awful place. And glory to God, I'm glad I'm not going. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood is running through my veins. I'm adopted a child of God. Hallelujah. I've got a pre place prepared for me up in heaven. Angie asked me what I was going to preach on. I said, well, I think I'm going to preach on heaven. Well, God changed that. <laughs> now, the primary purpose of the gospel message is the salvation of the lost. That's the primary. Listen, people. We needed it before we was saved, didn't we? We needed the gospel, didn't we? If it wasn't for the gospel uh, that was preached to us, we wouldn't have never known, would we? And I'm going to say something here, and I know Greg says it a lot. This world don't understand what we understand. This world don't see what we see. This world is blinded uh, by Satan. Somebody asked me one time, and I'm going to say this, and it, it, it might be online, yeah, but I don't care. Somebody asked me one time, I worked at Walmart up in Hendersonville, and some woman come up to me and asked if she knew I was a preacher. She asked me, she said, let me ask you a question. That's when uh, the gay marriages was getting pretty big. She said, what do you think God thinks about that? I said, let me tell you something. And I'm going to mention this. And I'm going to say this, and she just was amazed because I said it this way. I said, listen, God hates the sin, but loves the person. God hates the sin, but loves the person. The problem is, the church lets the sin come in, and that can't be. No way possible that can be. Thirdly, the gospel is marked by a plan. What is the plan? Uh, verse 16 tells us in no, no uncertain terms exactly how this gospel message of salvation is activated. Notice that it is to everyone that believes. Everyone that believes. This makes it perfectly clear that biblical salvation does not involve complicated religious rituals. Hallelujah. Salvation is the product of faith and faith alone. This is the point where many people stumble. People like to do things for themselves, don't they? I like to do things for myself, don't you? Uh, they like to feel that they have a part of everything in their lives. But however, in the matter of salvation, the sinner can have no part. Why? If I had a part of my salvation, I'd be in trouble. Wouldn't you? The only part that I had to have enough choice to come to God... God does all the saving. Amen? I can't save myself. Mama and Papa can't save me. Mama and Daddy can't save me. So if you're here, and let me tell you this, if you're here because Mama and Papa uh, raised you in church and you never come to the Lord, you might want to come to the Lord. Because it's not our professors at Fruitland says, if you're here because of Mama and Papa, you might want to leave. 
Same way. Listen very carefully. You, if you're lost tonight, you need Jesus Christ because you do not know when you're leaving this world. Or you don't even know when Jesus Christ comes back. And I'm going to get out of context just a little bit. People better open their eyes because I believe they ain't but one more thing to happen. And that's Jesus Christ splitting the eastern sky and saying, church, come home. My bride, come home. And then what's going to happen is, I always say it, I'd like to be in the graveyard when that happens. Them graves is going to pop open. And Paul says it this way in 1 Thessalonians, the dead in Christ will rise first. And the ones that remain, uh, still remain on the earth will rise with them and meet the Lord and be with the Lord forever. You know, let me tell you something, church. Whoa, glory. Let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. People, heaven's going to be wonderful. Let me tell you something. I want to see Jesus, the one who died on the cross for my sin. Amen. I want to look on him, uh, look on his face. And I want to bow to him and worship the Lord uh, that saved me. That's what I want. And let me blow your mind here just in one second. Revelation tells me that, that John looked out and saw all the saints worshiping Jesus Christ at the foot. He saw me that day. Oh, glory. He saw me. He saw you. Ain't that good? Now I'm about to get fired up. Oh, praise God. All right, let's get back to the... God's good, isn't he? He's awesome. I'm not worthy of his grace or his mercy, but he loved me. And he died for me. And let's not leave out he rose from the dead. Because he lives, I live today. When I asked Christ to come and save me, I was dead in my sin. Because he's alive, he rose me from the dead. Praise God. John 6, 47 it says, It's verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Do you see how easy that is? But the Bible does say, What? The demons believe and tremble. See, we've got a different belief, don't we? We've got a belief. We believe that God, uh, that we got to believe in our heart that God can save us, don't we? we got to have faith, don't we? Listen here. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his own... You know that's the most quoted verse in the Bible. Or this one. Judge not or ye be judged. But God loved everyone, didn't he? And he sent his son to die on the cross. John 5, uh, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth uh, on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. We're passed from death unto life. You've got life this morning or this morning. I'm in the wrong time today, ain't I? This evening. You got life because of Jesus Christ. It's not because of the preacher. It's not because of the deacons. It's not because of your grandma or grandpa. You've got life because of Jesus Christ. Acts 16, 31, and this is one of my favorite uh, scriptures. 
Uh, this is when, the, uh, when they threw Paul and Silas in jail. And Paul and Silas was singing and praising God at midnight, and God opened the doors, didn't he? And the jailer was scared. And what happened? The jailer come in and said, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Paul hollered and said, Don't worry, don't worry. We're still here. We're still here. He says, How can I be saved? And this is what Paul told him. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Do you know that night that jailer got saved, and his whole house got saved? Listen very carefully. His whole house got saved. When God saves a person, they change. And that testimony will show other people that they need salvation. Amen? Church, you need to wake up. Now let me tell you, I am thankful that the Lord kept his gospel inexpensive. Don't you agree? Praise God. Praise God. And easy to understand. Now let me ask you this personal question. Have you believed the gospel? Number four. I've got five points. Is that all right? Number, I can keep you here all night if you want to. Uh, number four. No, I'm not going to. Number four. The gospel is marked by a pledge. Um, uh, this great saving gospel message is for every person in the world. Every, no matter who you are. No one is beyond the reach of the gospel of grace. And notice these words from our Savior in Revelation 22, verse 17. Now listen very carefully. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let, will, let him take the water of life freely. Who is the water of life? Jesus Christ. That's easy, ain't it? Just come to God. Just come to Him. Believe that Jesus died and He rose from the dead for you. You can be saved. That's, that's how easy it is. But I wouldn't promise you the, the road after that is easy. But I will promise you, you've got someone that stick with you through it all. And His name's Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. I'm going to say this, and, and of course, I don't care. You can throw stones or whatever. Listen, every day's not a Friday for me. Is it for you? I'm not going to mention no names. Everybody knows who wrote that book. A Christian life ain't a bed of roses. Jesus says, take up thy cross daily and follow after me. That don't mean take up your cross once. That means daily and follow after him. Paul says in Corinthians that when Jesus comes in, he changes. All things is new. The old is gone. And let me tell you something. I, I, I can remember uh, Preacher Pruitt. Uh, I, I actually got saved underneath his preaching. And that morning of August of 1994, uh, when I come down and gave my heart to God, when I walked out these church doors, uh, even the flowers looked different. The sunshine looked different. And the people that I hated looked different. I loved them. Why? Because I had the love of God in me. Listen, before I was saved, and you can ask my wife, uh, I probably did just about any drug that you can think of except for cocaine. I drunk all the time. But when God saved me, I stayed away from that stuff for a little bit, and now it don't even bother me. It bothers me that people's on that stuff. But I can walk up to them. Uh, while I can actually walk up to them while they're sticking the needle in them and spread the gospel to them while they're doing that. Can you do that? Let me ask you, let me tell you a story, and you can ask my wife. We was up in New Hampshire, and everybody, the ones that was here before we left, 
knew that we went up New Hampshire. Mm, it was too cold for me. The first week we was there, it was four and a half foot of snow. I was ready uh, I, because we was close to the White Mountains. But as we were serving up there for three months, uh, what happened was we would serve uh, the homeless people. We served each Saturday over 300 homeless people. Th over 300. The last weekend that we was up there, we served over 400. A and as I was walking through there, I seen a young lady, and actually Angie helped a 16-year-old that her mama pimped her out when she was 10 years old. And this young lady uh, come up, and, and I prayed with this young lady, and the pimp was right behind me while I was praying. God put a hedge of protection. That's how God works, isn't it? But they say that that area is 98.9% .9 unchurched. They're closing churches down left and right and making them barns. And then, listen, I'm going to say this. Don't get mad. Just get glad. But down here in South, we got a church on every corner. And then no one wants to go spread the gospel. Uh, listen, people's going overseas, and praise God for the ones overseas. But now let me tell you something. America today needs missionaries. They need the gospel preached to them. And I will say this. The White House needs the gospel preached to them. Washington, D.C. needs the gospel. California needs the gospel. North Carolina needs the gospel. Everyone needs the gospel, don't we? So the gospel is to everyone, not just me, but to everyone. Let me check my watch here. I haven't been preaching but about 25 minutes, and y'all's already fallen asleep. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, many have labored over the term to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Has anybody ever looked at that and said, what in the world is Paul saying? Probably all of us have, have we? So the gospel comes to the Jew first. But let me tell you something. This shouldn't bother us. God didn't give the gospel to the Jew first in reference to priority. He gave the gospel to the Jew first in reference to time. See, he had been dealing with the Jewish people for thousands of years, and when he sent his son into the world to be the Messiah of the Jewish people, they rejected him, didn't they? what the Bible says. They rejected him. They hung him on the cross. Now the Lord has turned to the Gentile people of the world to offer them salvation as well. And you ought to thank God that he did that. Why don't you study the Old Testament? There wasn't too many Gentile people was involved, was they? Come on now. Let's just, they wasn't, was they? But in the New Testament, I love the story when Peter was on the housetop. Does anybody ever remember in the book of Acts? And God told him to eat. Peter said, no, I can't eat that. That's unclean. And God told Peter, says, well, whatever I cleanse is not unclean. And what he was referencing to was the Gentiles. And I thank God today that he brought the gospel to the Gentiles and not just to the Jews. Because let me tell you something. If he didn't, we'd all be hell bound. We all thank God. These verses make it clear that salvation is for anyone regardless of their race, their social standings, their education, their ability, their wickedness, etc. It's for everyone. 
Uh, there is nothing which can prevent anyone who wants to be saved from being saved. Nothing that is except for the sin of unbelief. That's it. The pledge of the gospel is for every man everywhere. Now thank God that is so. If there had been restrictions on salvation, then I surely would have been left out. And you would have too. Every one of us would have been left out if there was restriction. And fifthly, and then lastly, the gospel is marked by a payoff. There's a payoff. Did that even sound right? The product of the gospel in, in the life of a believer is righteousness. Listen very carefully. Man has two problems. The first one. He thinks he is righteous and is therefore acceptable to the Lord. The second one. He is absolutely wrong about the number one. Man is not righteous and cannot produce righteousness by self-will or his own works. When faith is placed in the gospel message and Jesus Christ is a believe on in the heart, God takes the sinner and declares him to be righteous. What man cannot do by effort, God does by his power. You see, simply uh, is stated, everything man looks for in religion, peace with God, acceptance by God, a right relationship with God, etc., are all given to the believer when he receives the gospel message. That is the message worth sharing, isn't it? Now, what does the phrase from faith to faith mean? It simply refers to the fact that the believer's life is to be one of faith in God. As the believer's life is lived in faith day by day, the righteousness of God is revealed in the believer's life from beginning faith to the ending faith. As this verse concludes, faith is to be the way of life for the child of God. Now listen very carefully. We have been given a gospel worth believing and one that is worth sharing, haven't we? I got three things here. Are you trusting the gospel of Christ for your salvation? Are you sharing the gospel like Paul did when he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel? And let me ask you a question. Do you know why Paul said that? Does anybody know why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? At that time period, let me tell you how wicked it was. It was wicked. Nero was the imperial. And what Nero done, he was, he was a wicked, wicked man. He would take Jewish people and hang them by the stake and catch them on fire. When you walk through the, uh, through the city, uh, that would, what would light up the city. That's how wicked that man was. And when Paul says, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you in Rome, and then he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, he said, listen, I'm going to preach no matter what. And I'm going to tell you, church, I'm going to preach no matter what. They can get mad or they can get glad. They can throw me in prison. I'm going to tell people what sin is sin and what's life is life, and Jesus Christ is real. And hell is real, too. And one great thing, I, I have to throw this in the end. Do you know Satan don't even own his own keys to his own house? <laughs> Come on now. And who in the world would want to serve a, a dead God? He's dead. Satan's dead. He knows it. He's, he's whooped. When Jesus died on the cross, and, well, let me just say this. When Christ died on the cross, Satan thought he had him whooped. But on that third day when he rose from the dead, he knew he was defeated. That's who we serve. Now let me tell you something. The same message that Paul preached over 2,000 years ago and got people saved is the same message we can preach and people still get saved by the same message. That's how powerful our God is. 
He spoke everything into existence. Spoke it and it happened. That's who we serve. And one day, we'll see him face to face, won't we? Are you ready? Are you ready to see him? You know, I told uh, the church that I serve, now I'm not saying Chestnut Ridge ain't ready, and I'm not saying uh, the Emma Baptist where I served at is not ready. But what I'm saying, I do not think the church is ready for Jesus Christ to come back. I don't think they're ready. Paul says we need to pray that he'll come back, don't we? I'm ready. I'm ready to see him. I'm tired. Are y'all tired? I'm tired of living in this sinful world. I'm tired of people being mean to one another and hating one another. I'm just tired of it. Ain't you tired of it? Let's just be honest with ourselves and God. Let's just be honest with God. I'm wore out. But I'm going to fight that battle until he comes and gets me. Are you going to fight? Are you going to fight for the sake of the gospel tonight? You know Paul was beheaded for that sake. Paul was beheaded for the gospel. Peter was crucified upside down for the gospel. Most of the disciples was beheaded. And I'm going to close with this. You know a lot of times the preacher says they're going to close and they keep on going. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that God would take the most important message and give it to a law, well, a sinner saved by grace to get it out. Ain't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That amazes me. God just amazes me every day. Does he amaze you every day? Now let me ask you, how are you doing about spreading the gospel tonight. Do you go into Walmart? And let me tell you something. If you want to see any type of people, go just go into Walmart. Just go into Walmart. Don't go into Target. Just go into Walmart. <laughs> Come on now. Let's just be on. It's awful, ain't it? But do you go in there and spread the gospel? Do you tell everybody about Jesus Christ? We do. We need to, don't we? And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a preacher. And I don't do enough. Let's just be honest with one another. I, I could do more. We all can, can't we? Let me ask you another question. Are you saved? Do you know where you're going when you leave this world? You can. It's that easy. You should believe in Jesus Christ. There's our hope. It's Jesus Christ. You should believe in him. Live for him. Trust him. Yes, we go through things in our life. I, I read this. I got plenty of time. I read this blog. Does anybody ever read blogs? Does anybody know what a blog is? I didn't know until some other preacher showed me. But I read this blog and this little, little and I'm going to use this in one of my sermon illustrations. This preacher uh, was, uh, he lost everything in a fire. He lost his wife, his kids, and he was walking down the road one day, and he says, well, I'm just going to give up. I'm going to give up on God. I'm going to give up on it. Why would God uh, do that to me? Why would God take everything I have? I've served him so many these years, 
uh, and he was walking, and they was building a big cathedral. Um, and he was looking at it, and he saw a little hole right on the very tip top. And then he saw a, a masonry sitting there chiseling something on the bottom. And that preacher walked up to him and said, what are you doing? He said, this is what I'm doing. He says, I'm chiseling this little rock, this little tiny rock, so it'll fit up in that hole up there. So the preacher was thinking about this. He said, listen, God is chiseling me down here so I'd fit up there. So when we go through trials and tribulations, when we go through things in our lives that we know we can't handle and we can't handle without God's help, just think about it. God is chiseling us down here so we can fit in up there. That's how great our God is. Now, I know I've rambled. Sometimes us preachers know how to ramble. Sometimes I get out in the universe. But I bring it back. Do we have any more preachers in here? Mm -mm -mm. Do you ever go out in the universe? Yeah. Emma, the church I served up there, said, Man, you went way out there today. I said, Well, I brought it back where it needed to be. Uh, but, you know, God is amazing, and God loves you. The ones that's online, uh, if you don't know Christ, and I think, does Chestnut Ridge got a number that goes on the bottom of that? Or, I don't know. How do they get in touch with someone if they need to get in touch? With them? Is it on there? If you realize that you need Christ, and, and uh, there's a number or an email or whatever it is online, just reach out to someone. Uh, they're here, and I guarantee you, Greg, Greg Neely will help you. I know one thing, Chestnut Ridge has got a good pastor. You need to love him. You need to take care of him. Uh, but if your life isn't where it needs to be, get it to where it needs to be. That's all God wants. God's main purpose is to, image, uh, to bring us to the image of Jesus Christ. And now let me tell you something. We'll never be there until we get to heaven. But that's his purpose. Is everybody awake? I see some people don't nod and nod. You want me running up and down the aisle? No. But it, it, it was a great time in the Lord. I, I enjoyed myself. Praise God. I'm going home one day. I'm the only a pilgrim on this earth. And we're going to a land that's filled with milk and honey, like the Old Testament said. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we do praise you because you're worthy to be praised, Father. Father, we thank you so much for your love, your, your, your gospel message, Lord. We thank you, Father. Father, I just pray that you would send us out into this dying world with the gospel message, Lord, and, and for seeing it, Father. And, and Father, I pray that you would just soften the hearts of the lost people, uh, Lord, and, and they would just believe in you. In Christ's name, amen.